Welcome to Swarf and Chips. We are bringing you all the latest news and technology via MTDC and C. Coming up, I've got Paul and Joe who are talking machine tool technology and tooling. I've tracked down Mark from an event somewhere, so he's going to be throwing all the information that we've found out from those events. And also, I found Colin who is bringing a mystery guest. Make sure you're watching after this. So let's go. Um, you visited XYZ. Tell me a little bit more. It's a 160 mil bore lathe with a three meter gap bed. Tell me a bit more about it. Okay, before we do that, welcome to the set. You're much better looking than our previous presenter and probably more knowledgeable as well. Colin. Correct. correct yeah, correct. yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> You've obviously seen him. Uh, yeah, 160 mil bore machine. Yeah. Now, the purpose of XYZ developing this machine or this XL780 was to give the engineer a much bigger bore capacity mm -hmm. in a smaller footprint. So for example, previously, if you'd have bought a machine with 160 mil bore capacity, you probably, the, the machine might have even been twice the size of this. Okay. So you get more spindles in your machine shop. Yeah, it's a bit more efficient then for the footprint, it, everything. It is, it's fairly niche. To, to need to go to that diameter of shaft, for example, you, it's not very common to machine parts of that size, but when you do, you obviously want to do it in a smaller area because floor space costs money. Yeah, of and course. And that's the reason that they've, they've opened this up to 160 mil. And XYZ, I, I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but in my mind, you know, this isn't what they're normally, they're, you know, their normal machines, maybe the bulk of their business is. Where are they going in the industry now? I, I think, I think uh, the XYZ, they have an oil country lathe. They have this as a, a, a flatbed lathe. Uh, their business is predominantly machining centres, CNC bed mills, turning centres. But why wouldn't you, you know, open up your yeah, range to absolutely. accommodate the needs of all markets? And that's really what they've they've done with this. It's got some really neat features on. I mean, you can see me pushing that tail. Stop I was going to ask, what's that? You said about air purging. What's the technology here? Yeah. So, so the, there is an air purge on this tail stock, and basically, what that means is that the, there's there's air under it between that and the slide way. So, when you're trying to move a tail stock of that weight, of course, you need some. Big muscles, maybe yeah. the size I was of Joe. Joe. Yeah, and and then you can move it. But if you haven't got muscles like me, you could do with an air purge to give you that really, little yeah. bit of inertia. Um, so you can push it manually, but it's also got the drag and drop function, so it will actually pick the tail stock up and move it as well. Yeah, in all seriousness, as well with health and safety. Like nowadays, that's that's really really good that it, we're it going. At, I know it's a bit you know you, serious to, but... to move something of that size. You, you could cause yourself an injury if, if, if you didn't have that air purge. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great invention. One more thing is the door. This You mentioned about this feature of this door. I'm used to seeing doors. I'm thinking, where's the swarf going? I don't know if you're thinking that as well, you know, but... T tackled that head on, spoke to the guys there, saw the door. One of the reasons for the invitation down was to actually look at this machine and look at the door and show the marketplace, which is obviously what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, yeah, where's the swarf going? What about the cooler? Yeah, it's going to go but, everywhere. But, but, but it doesn't. That's okay. the beauty of it. It's fully CE marked. It's, it's much smaller. On a machine of this size, again, historically, you'd have had a huge door, yeah. which is heavy. You've got to lift it. Again, health and safety. Access is bad. Maybe the visibility is bad. All of that addressed with this. this in this market, it's going to be a big seller. And Siemens, it's getting more and more popular, isn't it? It is, correct. The um, control, yeah. yeah, the control, yeah. And I even mentioned in this video, you can see you've got the hand wheels, you can move the machine manually, or you can take the, uh, you can use the benefit of having a Siemens control with the shop turn function so you can get the best of both worlds. Yeah, it looks really good, actually. It is. Mm. Joe, I want to discuss with you Romy. Now, uh, Romy is Brazil's largest machine tool manufacturer. Not everyone is going to know. I don't know if you know a lot about Romy, but can you just tell everyone about company? Yeah, like this you say, company? they're a Brazilian machine tool manufacturer. Um, they make injection molding machines as well as CNC machines. And yeah, in, in terms of the UK business, it's growing year on year. Um, they're selling a lot of machines. And the, the video we're looking at here is the uh, 625F. 5F meaning five face, the 5X, which I've also got, is full simultaneous five axes, where this one is three plus two. I was going to ask you, oh, go on, I know you go. It's, it's, it's like right said Fred there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Right. <laughs> but, you know, you just said five axes, and my, my thought process behind it was they've gone five axes. Why are they going, not, not going backwards, but why are they now, you know, that's simultaneous, that's sure. an advancement. Why are they going three plus two? Well, if you go full simultaneous, you pay for that. 
And I would say, I don't know the numbers, but probably less than 20% of five axis machining actually needs four simultaneous. So the, the majority of the, the machining takes place is you're just using it for positional. So three plus two is ample. Yeah. Um, the machine itself, the bed, everything, the control, well, the, 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 you know, the guts of the machine, it's actually the same machine. So you're still getting the premium build quality of Romy. A lot of manufacturers do go backwards in some, yeah. I say backwards, they'll develop a, a five axis yeah, machine Yeah, I know it's not the right source, word, is it? But... And, and then they'll also look to, to develop a three plus two because they realise actually there's a bigger market for that than there is. It, it is a bigger market. Like, how often do you see a genuine four simultaneous five axis job? You don't see many, do you? But you, you know you can pay for the you pay for the technology, and quite often you don't end up using it. So, okay. Good machine, though. Going to be a good seller for. Yeah, 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 for sure. Paul, the Chiron machine. You're actually really impressed by this. Tell me why. Yeah, she, you, you can't help but be impressed by Chiron. This new mill series. Uh, it's a slightly different concept of machine tool, but but the the, the guts of it. Use a word that Joe's used already. Is about speed and performance. The acceleration of this machine is two G, pretty much in all axes. And, and that means that when you've got a longer component like they've got in here on this machine, you may need to go from one end to the other. Now, it's great having rapid feeds of 60, 70, 80 metres a minute, but how quick do you get there? And that's where acceleration comes in, and that is what Chiron is all about. Yeah, um, what I picked up as well is the fact that not everyone's going to be used to um, it being the, there's no table, it's a gap bed. Not anyone's used to that. How, where does this fit in? That, that's an, another interesting question because it's about how you have basically like a fourth axis unit on either side of the machine. Mm -hmm. And then when you buy the machine, you're going to be buying it for a specific application. Here there's some kind of aerospace structure. And what you'd then have is a fixture that you'd manufacture uh, that would sit between the two axes and then the part sits on the fixture. So you almost buy the machine without a table or you can buy it without a table and then put your fixturing you know on it so you're tailing it to yeah. your your next correct uh, uh project or, or that way oh, go on. and by having the two axes on either end means it's fully supported as well and both will drive the uh, the table and the speed this indexes is phenomenal too joe so we've got the lang robo tracks here 120 components at a time what's the industry standard is this a lot more or well, it's difficult to say, really. It really does depend. But the beauty of this, this is designed for smaller components, really. If you want large components, although you can take some vices out to, to accommodate larger components, this is for smaller components, really. But as you can see here, this has been loaded by you know, a more traditional robot, whereas Lang systems historically have been like a tower system or maybe a table. But this is a, you know, a proper five-axis robot. You mentioned retrofitting as well. If I'm an engineer and I've got a machine, are there limitations to what you can use? Older machines, newer sh machines? It, it will go up. I don't know how old the machine could potentially be, but certainly anything within the last 10, 15 years it would fit, yeah. They retrofit a, a, a large number of their, of their installations will be a retrofit. Okay. Now, next machine is the Matsura. Um, I've already watched some of my research, and online is a video that's got 1,100 views. It's a, it's a lot of people looking at the, this machine. What's different from this to its predecessors? Is that one of our videos? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Because I was going to say, if it was, it would have had more views than that. Because <laughs> yeah. the Matsura views on videos tend to go through the roof, and this will be the same. In fact, this is the same. This is the new MX330. This, uh, their 520 and their 850 have been phenomenal sellers into the UK market. In fact, they're fastest selling five axis machine. The 330 is the smaller kind of the baby version. Um, engineers look at five axis and capacity is a big factor. They'll either go for a very small one, or a large one and so forth. And this is the, the, the smaller machine of, the, of that range. Who is that appealing to? Uh, this market would be a very, a very cross section really. You'd be looking at subcontractors that, that want uh, longevity, they want the, the hand-built quality of a Matsura machine. They've got a phenomenal, I use that word again, reputation in the market for supplying premium quality five-axis machines. I've heard that so, before. So, th you know, th they, they are, you know, a very impressive machine tool. Um, but this particular 330, we're going to subcontract as uh, original equipment manufacturers uh, as well, across the board. Okay, next machine. I loved this video. I thought it was brilliant. I love this company. I love the way they came across. CMM Machines, they're manufacturing everything. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, UK's biggest producer of CMM Machines. Um, it, 
beautiful facility in, in rural Gloucestershire, really, really nice. And we talked about the um, Extreme Machine, which is pretty much the Globe's first CMM designed for the shop floor. Okay. Um, you, you go through the video and you're speaking to Gavin here, but what interested me is what is the moment? Why do they want the CMM right next to the machine? What's the benefits? The benefit is the spindle up time. You can take a component off and if you need to inspect it there and then you can. Historically, well today, what we do, we take a component off, we go to an air conditioned room, you might be in your queue, you might be waiting for the part to be measured and all that time the machine's not cutting, not making any money. So this is designed to be right next to the machine so you can inspect it there and then. Forgive me for maybe not being you know, so sure on it, but isn't the machine going to be quite warm when it comes out of that? When the part's been machined, is it going to still have some heat within it? Yeah, it's basically the ambient temperature is all taken care for by the machine. Um, it, it, it heats the, the legs up on the machine to, to stop that problem, basically. Why wouldn't you use a probe in the machine? What do you need because, to again, you're not making money, are you? There is a big market for probes, and I endorse probes, but also there is a market for measuring off the machine. I like this company. Yeah, they're a good company. Good, you know, good British company. Okay, so this is Haas now that you went to. Difference between a drill mill and a drill tap? That's why this machine has been developed. The, the, the DM range is basically drill mill. You're correct. Drill tap is for one market. It's for companies looking at component manufacture where they are literally maybe looking to do light milling, a bit of drilling followed by a bit of tapping. Now, they've extended that to offer this machine to now have a, a bigger tool shank. Uh, so you can now do some pretty substantial milling. Uh, and that is really where the, the DM machine fits. It bridges the gap between their drill tap and their vertical machining centre quite nicely. I think it's quite clever how fast they've gone five axis, really, really fast. Who's this appealing to? That's, that's a very good question because I looked at this and I thought, hang on, when I explored how fast this machine was, I was gobsmacked because th this is like 60 metres a minute, 15,000 RPM spindle. That knuckle table is just shifting around like you wouldn't believe. And I'm thinking... You know, the, the, it's a small machine, it can, it can mill, it can drill, it can tap, but it can do some complex parts extremely quickly like this component was being machined here. So I think the answer to your question is who does it appeal to is, I don't really know who it doesn't appeal to, oh, if really? I'm honest. Because I think if you've got a machine shop, we talk about floor space, you need, you need to get as many spindles in a, in, in a working area as you can. You can do that with this because it's compact. If you want parts off a machine quickly in a production environment, you can do that because of the speed. If you want multi-axis machining, you can do that because you've got the five-axis capability. Yeah, nice machine. What's the taper? It's a 40 taper. 40 taper. Mm. Yeah. Powerful yeah. machine. Yeah. So you've got all the hallmarks of what you would expect from a machining centre of uh, in a small footprint that can do everything. So yeah, good interview. I was excited about that one. You probably mm. you could probably see. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Maztec. This guy is great. He's keen. Um, he's named his company after Mazak. Is that going to, you know, pros and cons? There's, you know, it's got a good name behind it, but also is he limited? It gets people talking about him, doesn't it? We're talking about him here today, but I don't think so. He's not called Mazak Precision, is he? So he can, he can buy whatever machine tool he likes. He's obviously gone with Mazak, two brand new uh, machines. And yeah, he loves them and he thought it was a good idea to ally him with that company for whatever reason. I think that's the message in this. It's, it, it's, it's more about what he's bought than his company, to be honest. I mean, it, you know, we love engineers, startups and all the rest of it, but I think this is great for Mazak that a, a new founded company has bought their kit and bought some quality machines as well from them. Normally they go older when they're starting up, don't they? Yeah. But uh, this, this is new it's, and he's keen and sounds really good, actually. Yeah, it's going places. Go back in two, three, four years' time, it's going to be a big company, I can feel it. Yeah. For Doosan, I feel that this is new technology with the direct drive spindle. Are, are they, why have they not gone over this before? We've heard it before, but why are Doosan doing it now? I wouldn't suggest that this is new tech, that the direct drive spindle is new technology to Doosan. I think there's lots of things around this machine that have been developed that take it to the next level. Direct drive, correct, is, is one, but the, there's, there's uh, automatic grease lubrication. Uh, this model of machines in itself, there's over 35,000 DNM machines sold in the global market. So it's a very popular machine. And what they've done is taken the feedback from their, these 35,000 people potentially and developed the machine to the next level. It's the next generation. Um, there's, it's a very fast machine. It's got a bigger Y axis, a bigger X axis than, than the previous models in a similar footprint. It's also got a very operator friendly control system, which Tony 
tells us about on this machine. And in fact, this review is about eight minutes long. Um, but Tony, you know, had a lot of points that he wanted to cover about the DNM range in some of the ones that I've mentioned and the, and the direct drive as well. So. We've actually um, done a video for ITC on, on this machine, uh, some heavy trachoidal milling, and it handles it beautifully. It's a good, robust machine. Yeah, it, it would do. As I say, 35,000 machines sold in 12 years. That is a phenomenal amount of machining centres. Uh, That's massive. Consumed. And I think what I noticed, I think this is a really good video to watch, and the reason I say this is because I feel like Doosan are you know, being more efficient with their machines from what I'm getting, you know, the same quality, better quality, smaller footprint, they, they are being more efficient. There is, there is a, a common analogy in this market, in the vertical machining market, vertical machining centre market, where companies are looking at cost down in order to sell more. So they're, they're taking maybe technology out of machines, taking features off to get the prices lower to sell more or to compete more. In fact, Doosan, they're going the other way, and that's what excites Tony and his audience to the fact that they're actually looking at upselling people to machines that have additional performance, they have additional features that give you more added value on your purchase. It's good sitting on price sometimes. At the end of the day, you know, our end user, our customers, the engineering shop customers, they want the finished product. And at the end of the day, you sometimes have to invest that little bit more to get more back, right? You do. And during this day, we looked at this machine and also two lathes from Doosan. Uh, they carry these machines in stock. They've got a, 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 a fantastic um, showroom facility where you can actually go and see these and, and have demos done on them there and then. Worthwhile going. Absolutely, yeah. So Joe, you went to Goring. Now the one thing that I noticed it, here is that doing everything in-house, What? how's that changed? Yeah, well Goring for years have been making solid carbide end mills on their own machines. Actually, They actually build the, the grinder, the CNC grinder to make the tools but they never run taps. The power tap is the first tap they've produced on their own machines. And what's the advantage of that? Of course, the machines are cheaper because they're making them themselves. Uh, typically, cycle times are quicker. So, of course, it brings the, the, you know, the actual cost of the, the taps down, which they pass on to the end user. But these taps, huge range. It's the 80-20 rule. For 80% of the jobs, they're great. You know, if it's the 20% where you're doing the same component day in, day out, maybe speak to your guru and rep about getting them all you know, a more bespoke solution. But if you're doing aluminium, stainless steels, any number of materials, you know, the, the gold rings will, will do it. It was interesting to see how long this video has actually been watched for, because it is a quite a static video. Yeah. Where you, you're just sitting there talking about drills and taps, and you think, you know, but the retention was like 80% people were watching it for 80% of the, the viewing time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it might be because he looks like Robbie Coltrane. <laughs> oh gosh, right, oh dear. <laughs> this, confuses me. I have no clue. I, I'm sorry if everyone else is the same and you get it, but... I'm this, the same. Are you? <laughs> no. You're adding, so you're putting an additive material down and you're printing, but then machining is taken away. Where, where's the, uh, the material? Where's it coming from? Well, this, the Herco, have, uh, Herco machining centres are, are very well sold around the world. Okay, We visit the A&B show. This was new. It was a brand new product at the show we didn't even know was going to be there and a lot of people going to the show didn't know it was going to be there is additive manufacturing on a milling machine and it's simply an attachment that goes onto the mill which means that you can go from one minute machining metal for example to removing plastic, it to, to, to adding it so you can remove it your mill you'll remove it like you do in a normal machining center and this uh, attachment is is then doing the additive part of the process it's 3d printing plastic on the machine now there is um, the, the critics amongst us, and there's some comments on our channel about how great it is and uh, you know, how it could be, be utilised, but there's also a lot of people that say, well, why wouldn't I just buy a 3D printer and have a machining centre and have the two side by side? So there, there, it's a very novel solution. Um, is it going to be a massive seller? I'm not sure. Does it show that Herco are right at the forefront of their game? Yes, it does. And the beauty of it is you can use the Herco control. You haven't got to learn, you know, you haven't got to learn some modelling software to use your 3D printer. This, this you use the, uh, the popular Herco control. But it's actually the first plastic one I've seen. There's lots of additive machines out there where you add uh, metal material, but it's the first um, 3D printer I've seen printing plastic on a machining centre. Correct, and you probably know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you, how no. quick do you think it is to go from actually machining metal to actually printing it was plastic. it was minutes isn't it they just need to change the tool head and that's it isn't correct. it correct 20 minutes from 20 one to the other 20 minutes you know it saves you having to buy a new machine correct it's two and one. yeah if you're not big into 3d printing and you think i want to stick my toes in the water and see whether it's good for me and you've got a herco machine 
buy the attachment, put it on the machine, try it out, yeah, sell it's some not, parts. It's, it's not a production strategy, is it? It's a bit of prototyping, get a product off the ground, and if it does go into mass market, you'd buy a 3D printer or, or a moulding machine. Yeah, you've got to start somewhere though, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. And this is the future. This is, everyone's Additive manufacturing, it. 3D printing it is the future, and I think this is just a way of Herco stamping their authority into that arena. Right, we're at MHP. Tebis, this is incredible. 20 to 25% off trimming time. Wow. Yeah, big saving, isn't it? Big mm -hmm. saving. It's on a, a five axis machine, five axis trimming machine. And the, the impressive thing is normally when there's a cycle time saving that large, it's a new adopter of CAD CAM. So, you know, the program on the machine, maybe an old ISA programming method, and they put CAD CAM on and they see a saving straight away. But these adopted CAD CAM probably 20 years ago, one, one of the first adopters. So they basically kicked out a, a, a Tebis competitor, brought Tebis in, got the training up in Birmingham, and yeah. When you say trimming, you're talking about just going around the outside of a part? Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? You'd think you might, you might shave the odd second off, but no, they've saved That's huge. 20 to 25 percent, yeah. CAD CAM at the moment is a big buzz in the industry. We do a lot with Open Mind Technologies. Similar to what we're talking about with Tebis, massive savings. They, they've got a new strategy called Max Machining, where you use uh, the strategy in, includes the, the use of barrel cutters. But what you can save on time or on production times using these type of solutions is phenomenal. A lot of engineers, don't they? They look at the machine tool, they look at the cutting tool, and they don't even think about the software, and they don't realise what value by you know adopting some of these strategies from these CAM companies or CAM companies can offer. Yeah, I was in an Autodesk user the other day. And, and they're not using Vortex, which is an Autodesk, Dell Cam, um, to record your milling strategy. And they didn't even know about it. It's crazy, really. It's a bit like having a TV and not knowing it's got more than one channel. You know, it's, you wouldn't do it, would you? No. It's the way forward. Ledwell, you're really excited about this video, aren't you? You can tell. Um, Just looking back, I was yellow as well. I don't know what I've been doing the night before. I think you were a bit orange, to be fair. You yeah. put some fake, fake tan on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your 10-minute holiday. Just after my holiday, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, OK. But you're right, very excitable about this machine, as with a lot of machine reviews. Ledwell sell a lot of machines around the world and into the UK market through lead machine tools. They sell a lot of vertical machining centres, a lot of lathes. This is the next step up. This is the next generation of machine twin spindle, single turret, mill drill machine, multi-axis capability. The things that kind of excited me about this was the size, the, the weight, uh, how when you got inside the machine, it was very well laid out. The doors, you've got two twin doors to open. A lot of turning centers, you might just open one door. This has got two, so the access was very good. The way the machine was even laid out from the, the, the swore fall away perspective, there was a lot of uh, you know, benefits to the product. Mm. When we normally do videos for Ledwell, it doesn't often have a sub-spindle. Is that new market? Well, I think this is the great thing for these guys, is that they sell a lot of machines into the market, and there's a lot of engineering companies that you go around that have got shops full of Ledwell machines. And what happens is, you know, an engineer will buy a machine, if he needed this type of technology and Ledwell couldn't offer it, he'd have to go to one of their competitors. Don't need to now. They're not stupid, are they? You know, if they're trained on the software as well, you know, it's easy. It's the, the whole machine shop could be led well now. New market share, isn't it? it? It means that lead machine tools can now satisfy pretty much the majority of the milling and turning market with the addition of this machine. Come on, Paul, we've got loads to get through. Come on, you've got about a few more videos. Just okay. go through them. So this one uh, shot recently at a and Talent 51, a new machine to Hardinge. Talent is a machine that was, well, many, many... 1988. Well there done. You, yeah, you, you beat me to it. That was the year I was born, I think. Was it 88 or 87? One of the two. It's my age. You're not 29. The, 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 the <laughs> talent machine. It's a 51 mil bar machine. The, the re-emergence of the talent. What a popular machine through the 90s. It really, really was. It kind of went away as, as Hardinge developed new products, but they've realised that the success they had with that, they can now have again. The talent is going to supersede the GS range in, in time. But as it stands here at the moment, this is a new product which in 2017 is going to be it's going to make great shakes for the engineering technology group. Along with the along with the talent, uh, Hardinge have now produced a five-axis machine, which is the XT machine, which you can see here, the 635X, also available from the engineering technology group in the UK. Spoke to Bob, another new machine to their portfolio, the Hardinge Bridgeport collaboration comes together again to produce another quality five axis machine. ETG, how many five axes have they got to offer now? They can offer everything, can't they? That was the whole idea behind the, the, the pie of the company. Mm -hmm. It means that you know, whatever you need, 
the engineering technology group can satisfy. And this is going to be a popular seller for them as well. Hardinge and Bridgeport, they've always had a good reputation just for being well-made machines. They've always had that, so that's not going to go anywhere. You, you look at Bridgeport, I mean, you know, when, when you were involved in machine tools, as you are now, but you used to travel around and hear about people that got Bridgeport machines. Everyone had Bridgeports. If it's in a corner or somewhere like that, everyone has got a Bridgeport. Correct, and that's yeah. not changed. Now the amalgamation of the two, the Hardinge Bridgeport, just brings together the strengths of both of those companies. Mm -hmm. Further to those videos, I want to just mention Fanuc. We looked at the new C800 EDM wire machine. They uh, previously just sold the C400 and the C600. The 800 RoboCut machine is now that much bigger. So for bigger components, you, you, can, you can wire cut bigger components. It's also the B series, so the B series has some advanced machining features. But this is going to be a big, big seller for, uh, for Fanuc, as well as their new Robo drill, which is uh, the new advanced Robo drill and the standard Robo drill has now gone to the B series. And then I want to finish, Lindsay, this, this today on, on this Dugard machine here, this SS1263L. We, we shot this video with Jim at, at Loftlock, uh, you know, very, very enthusiastic about the new purchase of this machine. It's got a massive working envelope in a small footprint, very robust, very rigid, but also very fast as well. And for his manufacturing of aerospace parts, the machine is ideal. He's got lots of machine tools from lots of companies, but when he selected his machine, the, this Dugard SS1263 vertical machining centre won his order. And that's uh, no mean feat, is it? No, no, he hasn't got two machines the same brand, does he? No. no. And, and for them to win this business shows that that, that Dugard machine is, is something else. Thank you so much for today. I've learnt loads as well, so I'm sure all of us will have Really? To do. That's fantastic. Surprise, isn't it? Yeah. We've served a purpose. Yes, yes, you have. Now, I'm going to meet this guy. He's kindly uh, driven to the studios today. So, and Colin's in the background and he's shouting, so we've got to go and interview him in the moment. So I'm going to meet Richard in just a moment's time.